All right, so this lesson is on reflections. So in terms of transformations, we've gone over translations and now reflections. Now the reflections we're going to be going over only relate to the y and x axis is axi. In ninth grade, you'll be doing reflections over other various lines, okay? Um, but in eighth grade, we're just going to do this over the y and then the x-axis as well, okay? Uh, so let's look at this u here, all right? Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to rotate that over the y-axis, okay? So something like this, okay? So from here, we're going to look. Now we want to find a point on this graph that uh, is going to make this really easy, okay? So we want a coordinate pair that just has whole numbers. And we can see, let's go ahead and zoom into this just a little bit like this. We can see that this will reflect on this point here, okay? And this one, it looks like it's uh, three and four, okay? So if we were going to reflect this, let's go ahead and look. Again, we're going to do this over the y-axis. So let's see how far away is it from the y-axis. Well, uh, this would give us this 90 degree angle with the y-axis. Okay, that's going to tell us the shortest distance. And it's just along this line where y equals four, okay? So how far away is it from that y-axis? Well, we can see it's one, two, three three units away from the y-axis. So if we're reflecting this, then it should be three in this other direction. One, two, three. It should be three units in this other direction on that same line, okay? Because it's just reflecting over the y-axis. Well, that tells us that uh, this point now, negative three, four, is the new point. So you can see here, there's, there's something very unique happening, and you'll see this happen over and over as we continue in this unit. But let's go ahead and look. Uh, so this would be, this point here is three, negative three, four, rather. So let's go ahead and get that on there, negative three, four. And now let's reflect this. So this will be our second image. And we're going to reflect this over now, the x-axis, all right? So let's go ahead and do that. So, all right, so what do we do here? We're going to do the same thing. Again, we're looking at this x-axis, and we want to know how far away this point is from the x-axis using this perpendicular line, which nicely, this lies on this uh, line where x is negative 3, okay? So... It looks like it's one, two, three, four units away from this x-axis. So we're going to go four units in this other direction uh, away from the x-axis. That will give us our new point here, which now is negative three, negative four. All right, and if we draw the rest of this, now you can see the translations, okay? So the first one, this would be, uh, our first one is u, okay, that's our pre-image. Our next one would be u prime, and this one would be u prime prime, okay? Uh, so notice what happened to all of the this image, okay? Uh, the pre-image. So when we reflected it over the x-axis, it turned it upside down. When we reflected over the y-axis, all it did is flip it. Okay, so uh, keep that in mind as we look over some of these problems. All right, just real quick, uh, the image and pre-image notation. Uh, we could look at this and just call it U. That's our pre-image. So this one would be our pre-image. Okay, uh, but the image, okay, so this is the image, has that mark, okay, and we call it prime. So this would be U prime. Okay, that means that it's been translated or, in this case, reflected one time. 
it's gone through some kind of transformation once. Okay. And then once again, this would be prime. This one would be double prime because it's the second image. All right, so as a quick review, let's look at uh, our transformations, okay? So we've gone through two different transformations. The first one is a translation, and today we'll be going over a reflection. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about reflections. Oh, by the way, there's going to be two other ones, and we'll go over those in the next two lessons. So, translations. Uh, that's just moving uh, a shape, an object, a point, whatever. It's just moving it to the right or to the left and then up or down or one or the other. Okay? A reflection is, in this class, all we're going to be talking about is reflections over the x-axis and the y-axis. All right, so let's look. Okay, let's say... Uh, for reflections over the x-axis, okay, and again, some of you noticed this with the example that we just did, okay. If you reflect over the x-axis, let's say that we started out with the point U, and it had these coordinates, x and y. Okay, after the reflection, after the transformation, we would have U prime, okay, the x is going to stay the same. The y now is the opposite of what it was. So, for example, if I were to look at a point, let's give it a point T, and we'll give us the numbers 23 and 50. After the transformation, in this case the reflection, T prime, would then be this is, again, is over the x-axis. We're reflecting this over the x-axis. 23 stays the same, but the 50 now is negative. Of course, this gives us a need for a second example, right? Because what if we start out with point E at uh, negative uh, 32 and negative 7, okay? If we reflect this over the x-axis, we'll end up with E prime. The x value, negative 32, stays the same. But in this case, notice this is a negative 7. So what we need to do is change that to a positive 7, and that would be our image of E. All right, well, what about reflections over the y-axis? It's a good question. Let's go ahead and look at this, okay? Uh, if we have a point, let's give ourselves u again, and uh, if we had the values x and y, so again, these can be any values, both positive or negative, rational, uh, they can be pi, whatever, so they could be irrational as well. Uh, if we transform this by reflecting it over, once again, the y-axis, It'll give us u prime, which now, remember, if we change it over the x-axis, the y value became its opposite. When we change it over the y-axis, the x value becomes its opposite, okay? And then the y value, as you can see, it's going to remain the same, all right? So let's look at this point t as an example. If we take t, which is negative 9 and 500, and we reflect this off the y-axis, we'll now have t prime, the image of that. Well, as you can see, the y value remains the same, but the x value is its opposite. So since this was a negative 9, it's now a positive 9. All right, let's do one more example. Uh, let's go and make uh, this one a fraction, okay? So let's say that I had four-fifths, and here I have two-thirds, negative. All right, I'm going to transform this by reflecting it over the y-axis, okay? And 
that will give me E prime, which means since I'm reflecting it over the y-axis, the y value remains the same. It's the x value that I'm going to change to its opposite, negative 4 fifths. And again, that's negative because this one over here was positive. Now this page in your book, this is saying the same thing. Uh, the line of reflection in this case, both of these cases, is going to be either the x-axis or the y-axis. Next year what will happen is they'll give you a uh, line like this and they'll say reflect this triangle over that and you'd get something kind of weird like this maybe. All right. So uh, there you go. All right, so let's look at this example here. Let's go and graph the three points that we have first. All right, let's start with A at 6, 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 3 right here. So this is A at 6, 3. We need to label these. B is at 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so this is point B at 3, 4. And C is at negative 2 and negative 2, which is right here. All right, and it tells us that we will be reflecting this over the x-axis. So let's go ahead and make that a little different. Okay, and I can connect those points just fine. That's not a big deal. Uh, but I'm just telling you right now, as I connect these points, you're going to... It's going to throw you off because it throws everyone off, all right? But don't let that stop you from understanding this game. The lines in the triangle don't matter. All that matters is the point, okay? So let's go ahead and put those in. All right, so this is the problem with this, is a lot of people look at this and they say, well, this is over the x-axis, okay? Again, you're looking at the lines. Don't worry about those lines. They're not as important as the points, okay? Let's look and see why this is the case. All right. Let's start with point A first. Okay, that's point 6, 3. We're reflecting this over the x-axis, so we look. Here's the x-axis. How far away is it from the x-axis? It's on this line, and it's 3 away. That would be a 90-degree angle there. So what we need to do is go 3 down. That was 3 up. So let's go 3 down, which is our new point, A prime, which is now at 6, negative 3. Okay, that's our first point. Our next point, B, you can see that it's 4 away from the x-axis on the line x equals 3. So we're going to go 4 down this way from the x-axis, which gives us this point. Now this is B prime, which is at 3, negative 4. Okay, and once again, I'm going to point this out before I do point C. You can see, since we're reflecting this over the x-axis, that the y values are changing. It's just changing from a positive to a negative. So what's going to happen to this y value here? Well, let's take a look. It is two units away from the x-axis. So I'll need to go two units in the other direction, giving me this point. All right. So notice the y value changed. It was negative, as you can see here. Now it is positive right here. And this is C prime. Okay. All I've got to do now is connect these points, give ourselves a triangle, and you'll see how that works. All right, so I'll give this one a try. Uh, you can either graph all three points, connect your triangle, and then reflect them, or you can use uh, just the standard way without graphing uh, to do this and then graph those points. You can graph all six at the same time or whatever, okay?
All right, so let's take a look at this, okay? I'm, I'm going to find the points first, and then I will graph them all, all right? So let's start first with point P. Well, P is at 1, 5, so P prime, okay, we need to pay attention to where are we reflecting this over. It's over the y-axis. So does that affect the x value or the y value? Well, since we're reflecting it over the y-axis, the y value stays the same, and it's the x value that's going to change to its opposite, okay? Q value will be the same way, because again, we're reflecting this over the y-axis. It's going to go from 3 to a negative 3, and 7 stays. Finally, we have this r prime. We're going to change that to a negative 4, and the y value stays negative 1. So let's go ahead and graph both of those and see what we get. Let's start first with PRQ, which is at 1, 5. So, so there's our P value. Let's go and graph Q at 3, 7. And finally, R at 4, negative 1. And what I can do right now is go ahead and connect those points because I know this is a triangle because it said and I can connect these points now and this will give me my triangle okay so there's our triangle let's go ahead and graph now a second set of points alright there you have it I put those lines in to make our triangles we've graphed the points we've labeled them as the image points because they are R prime P prime and Q prime and uh, you can see the reflection over the y-axis. All right, in this example, notice we're just reflecting this over the x-axis, okay? So our x-axis right here we can see that A is 2 away from the x-axis, so we'll go down 2 here to get A prime. And B as well is 2 away, so we'll go 2 down this way to get ourselves B prime. All we have to do with this, the rest of this, is just draw it, okay? So, there you go. And I've drawn it in, I've written both points down right here, and that's good.